Dobar dan, neki zagovornici čisto električnih vozila tvrde kako ona na vodik nikada neće igrati znatniju ulogu u napuštanju fosilnih goriva. S druge strane, kanadski konzorci za inovacije u prometu predvidio je kako će 10 do 20% vozila u budućnosti koristiti upravo vodik. Na nedavnoj konferenciji u Zagrebu okupilo se stotinjak međunarodnih stručnjaka na temu održive i zelene proizvodnje vodika. Među njima smo pronašli i Ibrahima Dinčara, podrijetlom iz Turske, a s radnim mjestom na Kanadskom sveučilištu u Ontariju. Professor Dinčar, how do you see hydrogen today and in the future just uh, as a, a way to, for storage of surpluses uh, from uh, renewable energy sources or uh, it has uh, some other advantages? Or uh, global warming or uh, pollution, environmental pollution coming down to mainly uh, carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide is uh, basically uh, released by burning the uh, carbon hydrocarbon fuels. So now what we need to do, we have to go for carbon-free fuels. And when we look at the humanity, humanity started uh, actually, uh, especially in terms of energy use, started with the uh, uh, wood and then coal and then oil, natural gas, and the carbon-hydrogen ratio, the amount of carbon is decreasing. So we are moving into an era where we have carbon-free fuels. What are the main uh, economical and uh, technological challenges for green methods of uh, uh, sustainable production of hydrogen? Right now, uh, actually in the market, hydrogen is needed by various uh, sectors and applications. And hydrogen is uh, produced uh, actually by the, uh, actually by the uh, steam methane reforming uh, process. So basically produced out of uh, fossil fuels, mainly uh, actually natural gas. So the point now, we, what is being proposed by us, by other leading uh, groups and researchers in the area of hydrogen production technologies, really uh, using renewables and uh, produce hydrogen by disassociating water into hydrogen and oxygen. So what we do, we have water, we use a heat, let's say in a, a thermochemical cycle, or maybe a photonically using the uh, light and they're uh, doing it through actually a uh, photocatalytically or photoelectrochemically disassociating water into hydrogen and oxygen. So this way we produce hydrogen, which can be uh, actually compressed, stored and transported accordingly for uh, use, or uh, at the same time, depending on maybe uh, going through a liquefaction process. So the point at the same time now, renewables will be critical, especially when we go for sustainable or clean hydrogen production. So that's why the challenges, the critical challenges to bring the uh, hydrogen production methods at large capacities to a commercial viable forms. This is important. So it means that we need to develop technologies to be able to upgrade them and scale up them uh, for a large scale uh, production. Right now, this can be from three to uh, 10 years. So depending on, for example, if you look at it from the, uh, let's say, photoelectrochemical hydrogen production point of view, I can say three years. And if you look at it, uh, for example, thermochemical, five years. And if you go uh, by photocatalytic, maybe uh, up to 10 years. Which breakthrough do you expect in the field of uh, hydrogen storage? In terms of pressure is one of the uh, technological challenge, you know, because uh, going up to 700 uh, bar, but uh, now uh, also material compatibility 
and also storing, uh, actually there is hybrid uh, storage options uh, available. So there are commercially viable options, but not uh, feasible cost-wise yet. So these uh, technologies need to be more cost-effective so that people can uh, deploy in practical applications. But what I can uh, see more importantly, such as our uh, actual studies, you know, to be able to produce ammonia from hydrogen and uh, store it, transport it nicely at atmospheric conditions. So what we say, okay, when you have hydrogen, it requires high, uh, infrastructural changes. You need to develop a high, a infrastructure accordingly, and you need to be able to store it accordingly at very high compressed uh, actually uh, form or liquefy. You either need to compress or liquefy. So uh, this way, what we can do, instead of going uh, that way we can uh, produce ammonia and we can easily transport and also store for later use. As a scientist uh, you are dealing with uh, biomass based hydrogen uh, production system. How to explain to the common TV viewer uh, the basics of that system? When you have biomass you can uh, combust it, you can burn it and that becomes a combustion, and you have heat, you can use it. You can use the heat. And that is going to be over, let's say, 1,000 degrees Celsius. And then uh, the second method, first method, is combustion. You can do direct combustion. Get the heat and use it as you like. Second, you do the following. You do gasification. Gasification is actually done in the, uh, 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 let's say, in, in the, actually you use air in an insufficient manner so that you don't allow combustion. You gasify at a lower temperature, 600 and above degrees Celsius. Then what you do? You gasify the biomass to be able to get syngas. Syngas and carbon monoxide and char, tar, etc. So what you can do, you have the syngas and you do actually a cleaning, reforming other things and so on and so forth and then produce hydrogen and use it accordingly. You also compared uh, conventional hybrid uh, fuel cells uh, vehicles. Uh, when you compare all that vehicles, uh, how much is hydrogen uh, uh, power uh, uh, more green than the other? When you look at the uh, vehicle cycle, not much uh, changes, because vehicle is vehicle. But what is making difference over there? The uh, fuel and the powering options. So the fuels, the biggest uh, pollution comes from the, uh, actually, fuel combustion. If you are burning fossil fuels, such as gasoline and uh, diesel, you are emitting of course, a huge a carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and even carbon monoxide and other types of greenhouse gases. When you come to hydrogen, you don't emit anything. So basically what you do, you have uh, some heat and water coming out. So water vapor coming out. So basically what you do in that particular case, no emission. So Basically, you bring the emissions down, and you have only emissions for the uh, vehicle cycle that is actually in every type. You produce, you manufacture uh, certain parts and build the vehicle. Yes, you have them. Even in that particular case, if you use renewables, there are options. You can reduce the amount of life cycle emission. So in this, what I can say, hydrogen vehicles provide the uh, best option. But what about ammonia uh, vehicles? Ammonia vehicles even bring uh, further advantages. Are the vehicles too expensive? Right now, definitely. Uh, imagine, you know, we have a uh, Mirai, 
and uh, going up to uh, let's say $160,000 and now prices uh, are coming down and uh, in the market uh, they are targeting in 2018 uh, Toyota is targeting about 5,000 vehicles but let's see how much is going to be you know because sometimes you know the targeted sales may not be achieved but what I can see Everybody uh, sees that the, the current practices are not sustainable. Uh, the question, how soon we are going to uh, shift to hydrogen? Uh, this may be uh, two years, three years, four years, or 10 years. So time will show, and this is not only something technical. I have to tell you, this is mostly political. You know, in the beginning, you asked, you know, what about technical challenges? And I can tell you, the most significant portion is about politics. So the political challenges are more critical. So what can be, what can be done? If they make the following, you know, some countries have already declared that beyond 2025, they are not going to allow fossil fuels based vehicles, mainly diesel, in their uh, cities. So this is going to block that. If they bring the actual environmental tax, you know, carbon tax, environmental tax, other things, you know. So this way, the uh, solutions with hydrogen will become more feasible. But this is coming down to politicians. They have to develop the policies accordingly to allow people and to uh, promote, you know, these hydrogen technologies in the actual practical applications. What are uh, the scientific recommendations for sustainable uh, future hydrogen uh, energy systems? And do you have a good listeners in Canada and Turkey? They listen to you nicely, but what is needed? Actions. So actions are not coming as speedy as the way they listen to you. They listen to you, it is beautiful, but at the end, people need actions. And this can only be done by developing right policies and strategies. So if those are not developed, and is not going to be easy, when you look at the economies in various countries, still the dwelling on oil-based economy is not something easy to change this. You have to change the mindset, you have to change the practices, and you have to actually convert politicians into a sustainable way of uh, actually developing policies and helping society. Professor Dincher, thank you for the interview. You are welcome.